Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. So let's get into the Forex fundamentals for the week ahead, starting November the 27th in the US. Uh, the week will be dominated by the releases of uh, PCE prices, which is basically a measure of um, inflation that the Fed uh, keep an eye on, <clears throat> personal income and spending. ISM manufacturing PMIs along with speeches from the Federal Reserve officials including Chair Powell. So additionally, attention will be directed towards the CB Consumer Confidence and the second estimate of Q3, uh, Q3 which is the third quarter GDP growth rate. Now the second estimate of the GDP growth rate isn't necessarily a massive deal but it has been seen. I think it's expected to be revised higher than the, I think it was 4.8 or 4.9 that came in um, initially, initially from the preliminary. So the first <clears throat> reading of Q3 and actually is meant to be higher, but let's see what happens. But it's not really necessarily a market mover. Uh, globally, monetary policy updates will be on the horizon with interest rate decisions expected in New Zealand. That would be a, um, a big deal um, and accompanied by speeches from various central bank and Bank of Japan officials. And again, talking about the New Zealand dollar, they're actually expected to hold um, uh, interest rates. But the where the price may move is the expectation on whether the bank is either going to be hawkish or a bit dovish. So it's really mainly about the speech. Um, if they don't hike or, uh, or cut rates, it's, again, it's, they're on a hiking cycle, stroke uh, holding cycle, they're likely to hold. But if they do hike, that would be, <clears throat> that should be positive and appreciate the currency. October inflation rates are anticipated uh, from Germany and again in the euro area and Australia and again that's really important because it kind of sets the tone for monetary policy from central banks so again with the euro area <clears throat> Um, inflation is expected to come down and so what that does is is that that means that the central bank are less likely to hike rates and so the euro may start to actually depreciate in value as rate hikes are taken off the table <coughs> excuse me and uh, Australia as well are, are in that basket in terms of um, the news and inflation moreover GDP growth rates will be unveiled for Canada and Switzerland. And again, that's gonna be um, definitely uh, should be worth uh, watching, especially for anyone who is looking to buy or sell the Canadian dollar or the Swiss franc. China focus will be on manufacturing and services PMIs. Um, why is that important? Because it gives an indication of um, Chinese growth and economic growth and global growth. So if China are growing, then in fact, that could weigh on the dollar. But um, at the moment, uh, the Chinese economy is in a bit of a slump at the moment. So let's see what happens if there's going to be any green shoots of, of recovery. Additionally, manufacturing PMIs will surface for Canada and Germany. Um, and again, that's an indication of some economic growth. And that will and Germany will publish, sorry, the GFK consumer confidence and retail sales. So that's all from tradingeconomics.com. And so you can check that website out. Um, and they, I think they give a bit more detail on there. And uh, for those of you who are in the uh, private mentoring group, um, I have uploaded the weekly fundamental or technical analysis video, which goes into a, a, a lot more in-depth analysis on the fundamentals and the technical uh, pairs that we're looking to uh, trade based on the fundamentals. So that's available in the trading videos channel. You can access that via the Discord room. So as well as uh, other videos as well, like um, uh, uh, I, I put there's a video here which is basically it talks about uh, why rate hikes can devalue a currency um, and GDP and inflation analysis. So it's not all the time that um, GDP uh, an interest rate hike uh, will it result in appreciating currency. And you have to know the environment when actually uh, a rate hike actually can devalue a currency and I talk about that in that video and also as well you've got Wednesday's group call so as well as other many other videos that are in the uh, that are in the channel hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos so <clears throat> let's uh, get on to 
some of the technicals and look at the uh, the US dollar index and the dollar index uh, I was saying last week that, that there's a potential uh, for a buy on the uh, dollar and I'm still looking at long dollars although we did come down to this uh, demand zone I was saying that was probably one of the options so I do think that we've come down to now 50% really of the high to the low which is another uh, uh, also known as fair value so fair value for the dollar from July's low to uh, October's high so fair value at the moment and I think this is where the dollar may start to at least um, uh, catch a bid catch some buys um, again depending on obviously the, the data but uh, this week we had or last week I should say the Fed minutes show unity on cautious approach to future rate hikes and so data to clarify progress on process of reducing inflation and officials agree Fed in position to proceed carefully and so the Federal Reserve policymakers at their most recent meeting uh, united around strategy to proceed carefully on future interest rate moves and base any further tightening on progress toward their inflation goal so all participants agreed that the committee was in a position to proceed carefully and that the policy decisions at every meeting would continue to be based on the totality of incoming information according to the minutes so um, totality of the information is basically looking at GDP looking at inflation if inflation is coming down it means that the Federal Reserve are less likely to hike rates. They're, they're likely to remain on hold. And I think pretty much all um, hikes have been priced out of the market now or near enough priced out of the market. And so there's going to be, if, 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 for example, inflation, inflation is coming down, I don't think the dollar really will um, uh, devalue a lot. It's not necessarily, a, I don't think it's on a, in, in, in a downtrend. Um, I, I think that the dollar is still a potential buy, especially when you compare it to a lot of other, other currencies, which we'll get to uh, in a sec. And uh, there was some actually some decent news, um, which was initial unemployment claims in the US declined by most since June. And so unemployment really is in, you know, an important measure in the Fed look at unemployment um, because, again, it gives uh, an indication of how well the economy is doing um, overall and if there are jobs in the economy and employment is low it means that the economy isn't doing as bad as you know it's not head necessarily heading into a recession because in a recession you have high unemployment so if unemployment is coming down it means that um it's a positive uh, reading for the economy and so um the economy seems to be doing okay of course so uh, the fed are you know likely to hold now the dollar index um, is just a measure again of dollar strength overall and i do think that um you know with uh with the dollar not necessarily being um you know the worst currency uh in terms of uh, their economic data and inflation data i still think the dollar can uh, still look for but i am well, i am i am looking for potential buyers on the uh <clears throat> on the dollar of course you can do what you want but if you are a buyer of the dollar i think probably now around this fair value area looks actually quite decent you can look for pullbacks on the uh, dollar index if you're looking to sell of course you're not necessarily buying a dollar index you're looking for um dollar crosses so looking for you know dollar yen dollar swiss dollar cad whatever currency you want to trade against the dollar and uh look to see if obviously that currency is at a demand zone or an area that you think is a is, is a decent area of value and a bargain price and a discount price and then look for some buy trades um there um so that's really where you're looking at and um yeah so that's where we are with the uh with the dollar looking at the uh fed um Federal Reserve, the the uh, dollar yen, right, and the dollar yen is in a, um, I think it's in a similar position in terms of buying. There were some levels that I've highlighted, uh, you know, last week that were saying that the potential for prices to bounce off of these levels within this wide area of demand, right, and so on a daily. And when you get these wide areas of demand. Um, unfortunately that's just what it is right you know these these are areas where prices could start to bounce off of these higher high higher lows so if you're looking at for example high low high low high low high and we draw the demand zones from 
um, these higher lows in the last uh, bearish candle before prices make a new a new um, a new high then it does look like you know this this could be quite a wide zone but we've come down into uh, this 14750 area which was again used as support support and then it acted as support within that zone as well and then prices kind of moved up from around uh, the 147 so um we've obviously established some sort of um uh price uh, buying from that area there so I do think that if prices do pull back slightly below that area because there is an obvious level of support I just think slightly below it I think that's going to be a really nice uh, area to look for some buy trades if you're looking for uh, short trades and buying the uh, Japanese yen then you're looking at this and actually the yen and Japan did have some um, uh, inflation and inflation reading that came out which was higher than expected and so that kind of puts the Bank of Japan in a bit of a um, sticky situation in terms of inflation rising but their GDP came that came out as being um, as contracting right they went into I think it was like minus uh, 0 0.5 so um, I still think they're still a bit dovish I think for now um, the 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 U.S. is in a better situation than the um, than the than the, uh, the Bank of Japan, but I think that will change next year. I think maybe going into the end of this year, the dollar is probably still likely to be the buy. But if the Bank of Japan um, can get the economy going and the, and the government can get the economy going and it starts to grow again, I think that. Bank of Japan and the, the the yen should be an absolute sell because they're going to be really the only bank that are going to look to hike next year, whereas everyone else is predicted to actually cut rates next year. So the yen should be the one to buy for, for 2024. But the timing of it is obviously the challenge and also as well, depending on whether the data supports, um, you know, the uh, Bank of Japan turning a bit more hawkish and looking to uh, change monetary policy. <clears throat> so these are the areas you're looking for in terms of uh, buying or these are the ones that I'm looking to buy or sell. The dollar CAD has come down to a really nice area and I'm now looking to be a buyer of the dollar CAD this week. Um, there is obviously data coming out. You've got GDP growth rate, but for Canada, you've got um, GDP growth rate. Now, uh, the previous is basically 0%. They haven't necessarily grown. I think if they go into a contraction, into the contraction phase or even stay at zero, then I think the, um, the Canadian dollar is gonna be a sell, which then means really uh, you should be looking for, or I'm looking for buy trades, right? I'm looking for buy trades because I think the dollar is in a better position than the, um, than the Canadian dollar. So anywhere around this area, it might come even lower as we head towards this data, of course, um, and see what happens there. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen. No one knows what the uh, what the data is gonna show, but if unemployment comes out as forecasted, so unemployment is going higher and um, GDP comes out, you know, as zero or contracting a bit more, then I do think that the Canadian dollar is going to be a really nice uh, continued uh, sell and the dollar will be a buy against the Canadian dollar but of course as well you have to obviously watch for um, the US news but I think the overall the US is in a better position and situation than the Canadian dollar. New Zealand dollar this week we have the um, it doesn't show on here but we have the, um, the central bank uh, announcement and uh, again, it's expected to to be a hold. So if prices, you know, are going higher as we get into the central bank meeting, and they, you know, the, the data comes out and they release and they say there's a hold, um, and also as well they're maybe a bit dovish, then I actually think that the New Zealand dollar might start to um, might start to sell off. I'm not saying it's going to be a massive sell off, uh, but it may start to sell off a little bit in terms of um, the news being priced in already right so uh it's by the rumors sell the facts so um i do think that i don't know if it's got much upside potential against the dollar but let's see um but if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar then you're looking at uh yeah like i said any shorts here but new zealand dollar if you're looking for any buyers you know you're looking for a pullback at least into 
probably this or one of these demand zones you've also got a decent area of um, decent area of uh, resistance and a bit of support there so definitely price has been traded within that wide area of demand and also as well you do have another area that's been looking like support and resistance in that area as well so you've got resistance bit of resistance on that candlestick there and you've got a bit of support so either at the 0.599 or 0 0.60 round number that lines up with if you want to get low on, on the uh, New Zealand dollar or down into the bottom of this demand zone, uh, the uh, 0.59 area, to look for any kind of long trades. Looking at the um, the pound dollar, and the pound actually had some decent news uh, this week. And it says here that traders trim wages on UK interest rate cuts after strong PMIs. So, um, it says here money markets are pairing back bets on the Bank of England rate cuts next year after strong UK business activity data showed signs of sticky inflation in November. So, um, you know, the narrative now and what's going to dictate whether currencies appreciate or depreciate against each other is going to be the narrative of who is going to be cutting first next year and who's going to be cutting last. So if traders are pairing back bets right or trimming wages that uh, rate cuts are going to you know happen later rather than sooner after strong economic uh, an economic reading then it looks like the pound actually should be a decent buy at least in the short term so that's the reason why you're seeing the pound still you know continue to rise against the dollar because i think it has to be revalued so we've kind of broken through that area of supply based on you know the good news uh, with regards to the uh, the economy the UK economy um, and I do think again there is some areas to look for buy trades if you're looking to buy the dollar uh, so buy the pound against the dollar either a pullback or something like that um, but I think upside may be capped or limited a little bit so there is a, a level there that you can look towards uh, selling and uh, some levels in and around this zone here before looking at uh, some sales. Let me just delete that and that as well. Right, I think I've got a bit too much uh, of these uh, these zones on, on second. All right, so into this uh, supply zone, we've got two areas which are quite nice in terms of uh, sell trades, but if you're looking to buy and take advantage of uh, some, maybe some pound uh, bullishness, I personally wouldn't be looking to buy the pound against the dollar, probably be a bit against a weaker currency, like for example, the Canadian dollar. Um, if the Canadian dollar news comes out and supports uh, 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 Canada sells, right? So that's where we are with regards to the pound, the, uh, um, the pound yen similar story and in fact this would be maybe a currency i would look towards i am looking towards buying on a pullback so any pullbacks into a nice demand zone are going to be nice for a potential buy with the um, bank of japan remaining uh, quite dovish and the bank of england um being a, probably a bit less uh bit less dovish and traders obviously taking rate hikes um, or rate cuts sorry off the table for now or, or, or prolonging those uh, rate cuts I think the pound on any pullbacks against the yen are going to be decent as long as the data supports that right so this week it looks like the oh, sorry, this week but the uh, the past data was that inflation came out higher for the yen so that actually was was a slight positive but Again, because of the GDP data, let me see if it's, if it's here. Um, yeah, GDP data came out on the 14th and it came out as minus 0.5 and it was forecasted at minus 0.1. So it contracted way more than expected, which, um, which is a, basically a drag on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the yen, right? So that's the reason why you're seeing uh, pound yen going higher. So I do think that prices should potentially go higher uh, it hasn't been this high since it looks like October 2015. So that's been a good um, eight years or so. So I wouldn't necessarily use any levels um, to look for any kind of shorts at the moment. Of course, you could if you wanted to try to look for shorts right there. But um, 
yeah, it, again, why buy the uh, why buy the yen is 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 really the question. Not too sure whether you should be buying again against the uh, the pound at the moment, but if you do, then this is a decent area to look for some short trades. These highs, uh, euro dollar, and talking about the euro, um, I did want to talk about uh, or introduce, in fact, I should have said at the beginning of the video, uh, my last trade. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have a section at the end of this. Uh, 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 analysis the weekly analysis and i'll go into a bit more detail um every week on the last trade that i've taken whether it's a winner whether it's a loser or whether it's a break-even trade so um i did take a euro swiss short and um i did also take a euro dollar short this week but my last trade was the euro swiss short so i'm going to break that down and why uh i'm uh, i got short on that euro in a bit more detail so uh you know, watch to the end of this video if you do want to see some more analysis and some intraday, uh, an intraday setup and what I was thinking. Because I tend to typically just do the bigger picture analysis uh, for these Sunday videos, but I don't necessarily go into uh, the details, and that's kind of reserved for the uh, Discord group. But I'll do uh, a little bit of that um, on this uh, on that trade breakdown for the Euro Swiss. Anyways, so Euro Dollar. Um, yeah, prices are making uh, higher highs. Prices pulled back last week into this demand zone. And uh, again, we're seeing prices going higher now. It's my view that I think the definitely the uh, the euro is in an expensive, um, it's quite expensive at the moment in comparison to all currencies. And there's really no reasons for it in terms of fundamental reasons other than the fact that the dollar has gone a bit weaker right so it's not necessarily that the euro strengthened it's just that the because the dollar has weakened um and the euro is pretty much inverse to the dollar uh, the dollar the euro is is benefiting from uh dollar weakness but we've got inflation coming out this week so yeah inflation coming out this week one second sorry not that one um it should be on the where is it yeah inflation is going to be on the 29th and also as well we've got yeah year on year uh flash um inflation so yeah 29th and 30th inflation readings and so if inflation comes out lower than expected and it looks like it is forecasted uh, previous is 2.9 forecasted is 2.8 then i do think that the euro should want to roll over because then rate hikes are going to be taken off the table it doesn't make sense for the european central bank to be hawkish anymore if inflation is starting to come down so um i think this this week we could either see prices retest these highs or uh, even go slightly higher but I think the data will definitely be the catalyst for a move to the downside it might even take out some of these stops as I'm actually in this trade this trade's a break-even trade now for me um, so even if prices do come up and stop me out I haven't lost anything uh, on this trade but um, uh, yeah my bias is still to, to try to look for short trades so if I get stopped out then I will look for more trades to the downside as long as the data obviously supports that narrative if not then in fact you're looking for a pullback into this demand zone before looking at going uh, looking for long trades and that would be again based off of really either dollar weakness or you're looking for um, you know if inflation comes out and it's you know higher than expected then you're definitely going to see a hawkish uh, European Central Bank and in fact this could potentially start to go to maybe the 110s but I think past maybe 110s 111s you know um, I do think that it starts to get problematic for the euro in terms of rate hikes and um, in fact rate, not all rate hikes are appreciative of a currency and there's reasons why but um, yeah that's where we are in terms of the uh, the euro dollar at the moment um, and let's see what happens this week. But my bias is still to look for some short trades. Uh, Euro yen at the moment. Uh, we did bounce off of this demand zone. Very nice. Um, the Euro yen isn't necessarily a pair I'm looking to trade. But if you are, then you're kind of caught between this uh, supply zone here um, and uh, this, uh, this demand zone at the moment. So um, either way, depending on which one you want to be a buyer or seller of, 
I think you've got um, reasons to buy or sell this uh, this euro uh, yen. Uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar, and Australian dollar is, is one of uh, the pairs that are one of the currencies I'm looking to buy. In fact, just not against the uh, the US dollar at the moment, but um, I do think that the Australian dollar is a buy for now. And so as we kind of head up into uh, this level here, where you've got support support resistance resistance as part of a supply zone as well um there's a potential for a short trade and especially because you do have i think some uh data coming out some inflation data coming out this week for the australian dollar and if that comes out lower than expected in fact the australian dollar may actually likely sell off so we could see something like that happen down back down to maybe the 65s but i think overall the Australian dollar should be um, the potential buy, uh, depending on um, what the uh, central bank says and what inflation um, what inflation does this week and the, uh, the uh, inflation data. Yeah, so ultimately those are really the options. Any kind of sells now or maybe just up higher into that sixty six fifty area to look for some short trades and um, buying the uh, the US dollar. If you're looking to buy the uh, Australian dollar any pullbacks into that 65 round number and just below that I think is going to be quite nice and the Aussie yen I think this is again another nice buy uh, just pull back into maybe that demand zone right there to look for any decent trades and continuations to the upside I think the uh, Australian dollar is definitely ahead of the <clears throat> of the Japanese yen and so, uh, yep, yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, where we are. If you're looking for any kind of short trades, then I think what we're seeing above that area, I think this is going to be very nice for a potential stop hunt. If it does appear, of course, is against the fundamentals. But um, as a technical level, I do like this. So uh, if there are, you know, if there is any kind of uh, a change to the fundamentals and you start to see a, a stop hunt, then I think that's going to be very, very nice for a uh, for a short trade. But for now, my bias is really to the upside. So any pullbacks into either the 97s or even just deeper than that are going to be uh, buy trades for me. And looking at gold, so gold again uh, with the dollar kind of weakening uh, over the past week. Again, we've seen gold kind of drift uh, a lot higher. And so again, if you are looking to buy gold and short the dollar, then you're looking at um, a pullback really to demand zones and nearest demand zone as, as we've made a, a higher high now is gonna be right here. So any pullbacks into this zone, you can see that level is also being used as an area of support and resistance, right? Where you've got support there, bit of support there, bit of resistance, bit of support. So down into the 96, uh, 1967s is going to be decent for a trade as well as this area here which is the 1932s for a pullback and again that's acted as uh, resistance resistance and again some support in and around that zone there so um, some decent levels to look towards buying gold if you're looking to short gold which is basically looking to buy the dollar in fact uh, again, for those of you who uh, trade stop hunts, I think this level here just above is going to be really nice for a, for a stop hunt type trade. So level, level, level. And then you've got this, if it does start to stop hunt right there, I think that's going to be quite nice for a short trade. But again, you have to really kind of see a catalyst. There'd have to be some really good news coming out of the US and uh, maybe even if, if Jerome Powell is uh, is actually hawkish, and the uh, ISM comes out again better than expected. It's forecast to come out better than expected. So if it does, or if it comes out higher than forecasted, then that should be you know a nice catalyst for um, any kind of uh, dollar strength. So that brings us to the end of the analysis. And now I'm going to go into the uh, the trade that I took on the Euro Swiss. Right, so here we are on the uh, Euro Swiss, and I uh, took a short trade. My entry was at the um, 0.9675s, and my stop loss was um, 11 pips above the high at uh, 0.9663. So uh, the question would have been, well, why did I take this trade? So fundamentally, 
Um, I'm actually uh, short, I've got a short bias on the euro. So um, one of the things I do use is the is is the is a currency index, and now this is a I guess more of a custom currency index um, where you kind of multiply the um, the all the currency pairs, and it gives you uh, more of a level average um, of the euro and what the euro uh, euro strength and weakness is against all the currency pairs uh, that we trade, right? Against the dollar, the pound, the yen, the CAD, the Australian dollar, the Swiss franc, and the New Zealand dollar, right? And it gives you, I think. A, a more equally weighted um, uh, 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 index uh, when it comes to uh, looking at the euro index because typically the euro index you've got the, I think I think the euro index is the EXY but that's weighted slightly differently in the same way that the dollar index is weighted which if we look at um, the dollar index understanding of the UDXY, which is basically the same thing. It says here that the index is currently calculated by factoring the foreign exchange rates of six foreign currencies, including the euro, the yen, the Canadian dollar, the British pound, Swedish corona, and the Swiss franc. And then the the weight is made up. It says euro by far is the largest component of the index, making up um, 57.6 percent of the basket. Uh, and the weights of the rest of the currencies in the index are the yen 13 percent, the pound 11 percent, CAD 9 percent, SEK um, is 4.2, and the Swiss franc is the uh, 3.6. Now, um, there's nothing wrong with using the dollar index uh, and the DXY or the UDX, USDX. Of course, many people do use it, but I find that when I use the uh, um, the more equally weighted um, calculation of the of the uh, euro and other um, currencies, I find it a bit more um, a bit more accurate for my liking. And so, looking at where we are in terms of understanding if the euro is um, is appreciating or devaluing, or where it is in terms of value. Um, it looks like we're really at these highs. These were the previous year's highs. If we go to the year to date here, you can see that this was the the, uh, the August highs, right? And then we've basically broken past these August highs uh, in comparison to where we were, the, re the most recent low, uh, an obvious low. So um, the question is, well, why? Is the euro strengthening because it's got great data and uh, the economy is growing and the uh, the uh, the ECB are hawkish and to me in my mind it's no it's really just appreciating because there's been some dollar devaluation and um, rate hikes are being priced out of the market now so when you look at where we are in terms of highs highs are typically you know what would be known as a premium or, or an expensive area right expensive and no one wants to buy at highs the mantra the, the the cliche is you know buy low sell high you don't want to buy high and sell low so overall, I think this is an expensive area for the uh, for the euro, and I'm looking for really prices to come back down to fair value, right? To some degree. Now, if it comes back to fair value and goes higher, it is what it is. But I'm trying to take advantage of this move back down and the devaluation of the euro back down to at least fair value and possibly even lower. So what we saw and what I saw on um, on the Tuesday when I entered the uh, euro Swiss was that the euro was on the expensive side very expensive prices were up here right at these highs and so going to the euro swiss on the tuesday what i was looking for was um really like an intraday entry now um again one of the things that uh, one of the setups that i trade are stop hunts now there's a certain criteria i'm looking for around here uh, to look for to to uh, for me to for this to be a valid stop hunt in the way that I trade them. And I didn't quite get it. There wasn't quite the stop hunt in and around here. But I did get a nice um, candlestick uh, entry, which was basically uh, right there at that price. And so this was uh, the trade, right? This was the trade entered and that was at you know, 10 in the morning on a Tuesday. And uh, we did get some um, Euro uh, devaluation uh, coming to the uh, coming to play now um, the way that I trade what I do is I break up this trade into uh, three or four right three or four um, uh, orders so I do, I've got a market order then two pending orders if prices 
do come back and give me a better entry, right? So if prices come back and give me a better entry, then I've got a better price and then I've got a, another pending order, sell pending order around here. Now, I only managed to get in on, unfortunately, one um, uh, position, you know, typically I can get in on two, but sometimes it happens where I only get in on one. And if I get in on one position, then what I'm doing is I'm looking for, if prices come down to at least a one to one uh, risk reward ratio, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna protect myself by um, taking off 50% of the um, of the position to get myself to break even, right? And so, um, Break even really is a good place to be at. It takes really kind of the stresses and pressures off of you in terms of, um, you know, whether you should hold or take profit to a certain degree. And if you're looking to swing trade this like I am a bit lower, then understanding that where my where my uh, I'm, I'm at break even. And uh, I don't necessarily have to uh, move my stop loss either by taking 50% off uh, is a great place psychologically to be at, right? So for those of you who don't really understand um, you know what I mean, so what I do is basically, let's say for example, this trade I risked uh, two pounds, right? Just some simple stuff, right? There's two pounds on that. I'm not saying I did, but just say I risked two pounds, right? Now I take 50% off, yeah? Which is basically I'm removing 50% off of the two pounds, which now means that I'm reducing, I've taken a one pound profit, yeah, one pound profit, and then I have now one pound risk. Yep, yeah, one pound risk in the market, yeah? So if prices now come all the way up here and stop me out, this is a break even trade. And so for me, um, this is the way that I trade for better or for worse. Um, some traders may agree, some traders may not agree, but this is, for me, the way that I look to trade and, um, you know, it works for me, right? And so um, from that position now, I can't lose and my stop is in a safe place. Some people, tra some traders may just move that down to break even right there and you can do that, but if prices come up, stop you out and then roll over, yeah, you would have been stopped out at break even for no reason when really the rule of thumb should be, um, you know, place your st placing your stop loss in a place where you're definitely wrong about the trade. If prices come all the way up here, then I'm, you know, likely wrong about the trade and I can look to probably re-enter at some point. So this trade at the moment is a is a break-even trade with a slight win when we think about, you know, the, the second half of the position. Um, so hopefully prices can roll over this week with some data, um, that comes out that is maybe you know not great for the euro and let's say for example prices come um the data comes out and the uh, data is supportive of of buying euros and let's say for example prices are around here then all i'll do is i'll just exit the trade right because because the fundamentals are going against me but for now i'm at a break-even position uh, well profitable at the moment unrealized profit at the moment um with a break-even uh trade and um you know I, I don't necessarily have any uh anguish or any uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for i'm not i'm not i'm not um you know stressed out about whether i should be, i should have taken profit down here or somewhere around here i've already taken profits i've always already protected my position so it's a good psychological trade you know uh, and place to be in so that's where we are that's my last trade at the moment this week i did take one on the euro uh dollar as well which is also pretty much in the same position um, it's a break even. It's pulled back a bit against my position, but I can't lose on that. So it's all good. And um, yeah, that's it. So uh, guys, until next week, um, I bid you a great trading week and uh, take care and I'll speak to you all soon.